Hello and welcome to Wildcraft Dye. On this week's episode, I'm going to be showing you how you can dye a rainbow of color using natural materials. And for extra challenge, this yarn is over 50 years old. All right, how do you plan out a rainbow project? First, figure out what you're trying to achieve. For example, a project like this, Maybe you're gonna to wanna to knit it or weave it, crochet, whatever it is. Let's get down to the colors. Now you always wanna do as few steps and as few dye material as possible to keep it nice and simple. So for the red and for the pink, and even this pale pink up here, we're gonna go with Brazil wood and I'll show you exactly how to tease out the red and the pink. That's one. For this medium orange, a great option is gonna be Coreopsis flowers with a little bit of a pH boost. We're gonna cover that. Next onto the yellow, the green, and the blue. What you're gonna to wanna to do is do two skeins or two of the yellow, and then this one will get over dyed into green, and this one is gonna be a few dips into indigo. And up here, it's the same thing, just a single dip into indigo. And all of these, all our videos on my channel I cover already. Now, when it comes to the black, that's going to be logwood with a pre-mordant of iron. If you're interested in about pre-mordanting, um, that is covered in a uh, video I did on acorns. This brown, um, usually all, when it comes to plants, all of the yellow dyers generally give browns with iron. Um, then I talked about the indigo and that pink. If you dye a the first round, get a deep dark color. Afterwards, you're gonna get paler, so that's how you can get your pale pink. So we're gonna go through all these colors. Added bonus, Jeremy. I also did a dark purple because I know some of the other flags kicking around and other projects you might want a very true purple, so we'll cover that too. So I have purchased this box of wool from a friend of mine. Now this yarn comes from July 1979, which would make it 44 years old at least, probably much older. Um, so let's crack it open and take a look. When I got this yarn, I really wanted to dye a rainbow with it because I thought about how far we've come from the 1970s, how many people couldn't get married, how many discriminatory laws were in place and how much has changed. And I wanted to take it um, and celebrate how far we've come and still have to go. But like a, almost like a a little bit of a greasy feel and you get this old fashioned way they used to roll the, do you call these roll legs? Not right, something, yarn sausage things. There's another one over here. But the newspaper, the date on the newspaper. So the first step in dyeing is going to be to wash the yarn and then mordant. Uh, to do that, I needed to skein it off using my Swift. When I dug through the box, this marl, which is a yarn where you have uh, two or more colors all plied together, there was the most of this style of yarn. So I went with this and I skeined off about seven different skeins of it to do seven colors. So we're gonna do red, orange, yellow, blue, green, pink, and purple. So scouring just means you're gonna give it a wash. And now this yarn, being as old as it is, it had a bit of a greasy feel to it. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unwind these, put them in a pot with some mild soap. Now for soap, you can use different kinds. You want it to be very mild. So Woolite is a good one to use. There's something called Orvis paste, which is what I have here. Or you can also use um, other ones. There's Centropole, that's more for plant fibers. But anything, I've even used dishwashing liquid. It's just something that's gonna um, break up some of that oil, some of that lanolin, get rid of any vegetable matter or other stuff that might be in the yarn. So in this case, we've got our pot. I've weighed it out. Um, and now I'm just gonna add the water, add about a tablespoon of uh, Orvis paste. I think I've got about two and a half to three pounds of wool here. Um, and then I'm gonna put it on the stove and just heat it up slowly for an hour and leave it to cool. And that's scouring, uh, just an easy first step. I left it to cool overnight and you can see just how much grime is coming out of that wool uh, the next day. 
At this stage, you can hang it to dry and you're ready for the next stage of mordanting. Mordanting is similar to scouring in that you're going to go back to the stove and heat up your yarn for an hour. This time though, you're gonna, instead of soap, you're gonna add a metal such as aluminum or iron. Here, I'm introducing my fiber to aluminum potassium sulfate or alum. Um, I have a longer description of this process in my video on acorns, but all the wool was mordanted. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail because I did a video on Brazil wood and it'll be listed in the description below. But Eastern Brazil wood is also known as sapin wood and it's the ground heartwood of the tree. And you wanna use it uh, for really rich colors at about 50% woof. Woof is weight of fiber. So if you have a pound of fiber, you're gonna wanna use about half a pound of Brazil wood to get a really dark, rich color. So here I'm measuring it out. And once it's measured out, we're gonna simmer it ahead of putting the yarn in. Um, and Brazil wood takes a little bit more time than other dyes. Uh, this one takes about two to three days at a low simmer. So what I'll do is I'll put it on the stove and I'll just let it simmer while I'm in there and then I turn it off. I'm not too bothered for exactly how long I simmer it for, but really it's just to let it give it soak and to heat it. You'll notice for a lot of my dyeing, I use these cloth bags. They're called paint bags. They come from the paint store. They're fairly inexpensive. Um, and what they do is they allow you to add your dye, simmer it, and then remove it all at one, all at a go and leaving your dye pot behind. You can also decant it through a cheesecloth or just leave it out all together. For the Brazil wood, we're gonna have two pots that are both going to be simmered for about three days. They were simmered on and off and then allowed to cool for three days. Brazil wood takes a little bit more time. So here is the yarn going in. Now, to get the red, you want a rolling boil for one of those for three hours. So one of these pots got the rolling boil for three hours and the other one did not. The one that just got simmered, so up to about 80 degrees Celsius, is the one that is gonna stay pink. This is the one, as you can see on your screen, that is going red. That tells you that the Brazilian became, Braz no, Brazilian became Brazilian, there we go. Um, and then it's gonna give you result in red. So this is a really easy way to get a true red and a true pink. This pink, as you can see here, was re the result of just being simmered. So there you go. You don't have to shift the pH. You don't have to do anything except before the fiber was added, just that simple addition of boiling, um, boiling the dye for those three hours, again, gives you this gorgeous, deep, rich, beautiful red. Now here is the pink. If you're finding that you're not getting a really good pink, you can also increase the pH. I don't suggest doing that with washing or with baking soda. I do suggest doing it with washing soda. So a little bit of a pH shift should also help bring out those pink tones. And as you can see, both are now left to dry and we've got our red and our pink done. Coreopsis is a great flower for dyeing. It's very, very stable. You can dry them. These were dried in the de dehydrator. And there is the yarn. That's the one that has been scoured and pre mordanted already. And you always want to do weight of fiber. So I think with this, I did 100% weight of fiber, but you can even go down to 50% weight of fiber. There's that paint bag again, and I'll show you just how I use it. The paint bag goes in first. The dye is now weighed out and it's gonna get put in the pot, then the pot and the fiber is gonna go, oh, sorry, the pot and the flowers are gonna go to the sink, and then that gets filled. It'll go fill about a third of the way because these pots are pretty large, and then it's gonna get heated on the stove, simmer for one hour, and then once it's done, I can remove that bag and the flowers at the same time. Now, if you don't have one of those bags, don't worry about it. Now, because we want the orange and not the yellow, right at the start, add a quarter teaspoon of washing soda. Or if you have a ton of yarn, do more. You can do up to a half or a full teaspoon. 
This was a quarter teaspoon to dye, I think half a pound of fiber. Um, and that increase of pH from the washing soda, also known as soda ash, means it's gonna give us an orange. Coreopsis gives us a really great stable orange. I'm so glad I discovered this dye. Now at this stage, I am going to just give those flowers that simmer for an hour and leave it to cool overnight. You've left it to cool overnight and you could add your yarn. At this stage, I would also add another quarter teaspoon of washing soda, especially if it's been a day, because often the pot will go back to, new to a neutral pH. this stage just allow it to simmer for the hour and it should come out a beautiful gorgeous orange oh I love this orange so much it's so beautiful and again if this was too fast don't forget there's a whole video on my channel on coreapsis Good news, but if you're after a yellow, there's so many things in the natural dye world that will give you yellow, many of which I do on this channel. But the one I decided to do here was birch leaves. I feel it's a really undervalued, bright, beautiful, gorgeous yellow. Um, and again, I think I used a two to one ratio. So for every pound of fiber, you want two pounds of the fresh leaves. These ones are a little bit older. You can see they're a little bit dry, but I used, I think I used maybe three to one here. But as long as you use something in that range, two to three pounds of leaves to every pound of fiber, you should be just fine. So I gave it a little bit of a soak. And again, always with plant matter, you want to give it a chop, really get those blades going. You always want to be increasing that surface area um, and really getting into the center of those leaves to get out the dye potential. So once you've sort of done that and you get bored or don't want to do it anymore, it's over to the pot. Again, I put the bag on, I'm going to put the leaves in and I'm going to simmer. I think I simmered these for two days, a little bit longer than an hour. And again, um, using the same process, I simmered the fiber in for an hour and I got a beautiful yellow. I think I did a few, but I took one of those over to the next step to make green. Now for this next one, I have a video again on how to set up a dye vat of indigo and use it. But all you need to know is I set up the indigo, I put it in for a dip. You want it in about three minutes, um, sort of three to five minutes. And if you pull it out, you should get some beautiful greens. Now keep dipping it until you get a green that you're really happy with. I think I did one more dip after this because I wanted a beautiful medium rich green. But you really can't go wrong. The more dips you do, the more even the color is going to be um, and the more it's going to uh, deepen and rich and become more even. So indigo is really fun to play around with. So I have two different videos on that. One is how to set up an indigo vat and the other one is how to use it. Um, but again, it is so much fun and it's so easy to over dye to get your beautiful, rich, stable greens. This is historically, presently, the best way to get a beautiful, stable green is to first dye with yellow and then over dye with indigo. Now onto the blue. You have set up your indigo fat and now you're just gonna use it, which is just the number of dips. You're gonna put your yarn in. I think I did 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out for these. And then just keep going um, until you're really happy. I definitely find wild indigo will give you sort of your best deep, even stable blues. It is quite a process to set up the vat. It usually kind of is an all day thing I find. And I usually have a lot of fiber set aside. If I'm just dying a small amount, um, it is hard to sort of be enthusiastic about setting up an indigo vat. For some reason, it is kind of an all day thing. But that one there, that is the blue that is used in this video. I think it took about three dips, maybe four dips, I seem to recall. And I just love this color so much. The only two colors I wanted to do is black and purple, and both of those are achievable with logwood. Now, logwood is not a super, super long-term stable dye. Eventually, it will fade, 
but it is such a great dyer and it's so easy to use that it's still one of my absolute favorites. You want to use it at about a 20% weight of fiber. So 20% of the weight of your fiber is the amount that you're going to weigh out in a dye. And you can see already just by adding the water how rich and powerful this dye is. It packs a punch. Now, if you pre-mordant with alum, like I did with the rest of the video, this is going to give you a purple. If you pre-mordant with iron, you are going to get a true black. It is one of the very few rare dyes that will give you a true black. You're going to do the exact same process we did before. Simmer the dye for an hour, let it cool, simmer the fiber in that dye pot for another hour, and you're going to get purple. Now, this goes but really, really dark. If you want it not quite as dark, you're going to leave it for less than an hour. Here we go. Here are the results. I have my lovely assistant to help me. We have our red, our bright orange, our yellow, our green, and then here is our blue from our indigo. And of course, don't forget, right from the original, we did the Brazil wood, forget that beautiful fuchsia. And there we go. There are our colors. I really hope you like this project. I loved setting um, the goal and the task and the challenge of getting all the colors all at once. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and weave my project. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you can use this video for your own project, celebrating the diversity on our beautiful planet.